the referee checks the watch, blows the whistle. A brave effort from Toronto FC, but in the end, it's not enough. There's two different things. One is the personal approach of how did I do? Did I do everything that I needed to do? This game's starting to fade away and drift away from Toronto FC now. Then there's sort of the collective thought, which is what did we do as a group? Uh, what did we do? We, what did we need to do better? Why did we not get this one? And a whistle will end it. Toronto's losing streak. It now goes to three in a row. The emotion of the moment uh, as you're walking off the field. You know, sometimes they lean towards frustration, anger, whatever, um, but there's always that, that moment of where you're trying to collect uh, your ideas on, you know, what maybe didn't happen in that day. The Reds are coming off of a high, a franchise victory over Orlando City SC. 5-0 was the result, the first time that the club has ever scored five goals in a single result. What I want to do is welcome some of the new faces we have around here. We have the Qataris, uh, they're here, we have the Gomez's. Uh, we have a lot of new faces around the club this year, so if you don't know someone, please reach out to them and, and introduce yourself. You know, as a player, uh, I think I've been on plenty of teams where maybe the environment isn't as tight-knit as it should be. Um, so this gives you a good sense of who your teammates are kind of off the field and, and kind of get to meet their families and we get to kind of combine all our families, you know, and I think at the end it just makes you a better team. We as a, a staff and as players, we spend a lot of time together here at the facility and this is our life, And but we have extended family who are also a big part of this. And, Today is just one of those days where we can get everyone together, relax, uh, enjoy each other's company, get to know some of the people that we don't know, get to meet some of the new families, uh, and really just kind of uh, you know, share some time together that is away from the game itself. We don't have uh, all the opportunities, a lot of opportunities to get the whole family together. It's great that we can get everyone together and have a day like today. So just enjoy yourself today and uh, you know, we'll get a win on Saturday. Thanks. It's cool to see, you know, um, just the different side of guys uh, outside the locker room, uh, how, how much love they have for their family. And, and then you get to see, uh, you know, why they come to work every day, what they work for and who they, who they play for. So it's, it's good to see that from my point of view. You know, I, I know I don't have kids and, uh, or anything, but it's good to see that. It's good to see that kind of responsibility and, uh, you know, that hope that hopefully I'll have one day. So there's a lot at this point. Michael Bradley, Damien Perky and uh, his family. Justin Morrow expecting here in the next few days. Ahmed, who just joined the team as a, a newborn. Jackson has a very young uh, baby. Hercules, Gomez, they're just uh, they're expecting. I'm not sure if that's public news. We're gonna we're starting our, our family and we're very excited. Mm -hmm. We're we're having a baby, so that's definitely an exciting for us. I think. You know, we're, we're thrilled to be here and we're excited everything that's enough to come. I think it's good for the team to just bond with each other on a day like this, you know, with their families and relax and just uh, enjoy life uh, away from soccer for a bit. And, but we know that tomorrow we, we're back to work and back to work to on our way to hopefully the playoffs. Toronto FC will be taking on the Montreal Impact this Saturday at home at BMO Field. The fans always get up for these games. You have Drogba in tow against the best player in Leicester, Sebastian Jovinko. If TFC wins this weekend, I, I, I'm just about to put a lock on it that they're a playoff team. Just go for the jugular and, and really put an end to Montreal's hopes of really truly chasing it down on the table. Toronto FC looking to equal their record for number of wins in a season. They have 10 so far this year. The franchise mark 11 set last season and we are underway here Toronto FC coming into this one off the back of a big win at home to Orlando City last week an Orlando team that finished with just nine men Montreal coming in having lost their last two league games now there's trouble here as Dominic Adoro gets in Dominic Adoro how did he miss what a chance for Montreal Jovinko here. Jovinko could get some space.
space to get a shot away, but he has found Jonathan Osorio. Osorio for Bradley! Michael Bradley opens the scoring. Just over 10 minutes to go until half time. It's Bradley with the goal. And Toronto FC in front. Donna Dahl's ball up towards Venegas. Some support to the left from Tiso and Aduro ahead as Venegas slides the ball through towards Tiso. Tiso across goal. Aduro. Toronto FC is a nine-point lead over the seventh spot in the Eastern Conference. So I think Toronto FC is sitting well with nine games to go. It's a big one on Saturday, a bit of a weird one though. We're missing a lot of star power, but TFC travels to the Pacific Northwest for a tough date against a team that We've come to know him as the dangerous Seattle Sounders. This is where the coaching staff are really going to earn their dollars, and they're going to have to make very difficult decisions whether or not they put the best team shape, the best team formation above playing the best players. Seba's not going to be there. Josie's not going to be there. Time for a lot of other players to get a chance to step up. Number one is Hercules Gomez. What a breath of fresh air Hercules Gomez has been. And I love how there's kind of the glue guys like Azorio and then the new players you add in that have something to prove as well. It creates a really good mix uh, from now until the point of the end of the season. I think this group is confident no matter where they go, they can come away with something. I, that, that's the feeling I get. Seven Eastern Conference games coming up. There's only two games that they have left against Western Conference opponents. One's this weekend. Trust the players that are in this team. This team has greater depth than they've ever had. I think this group is confident no matter where they go, they can come away with something. All right, thank you everybody's attention. We have a special surprise for you. So I'd like to introduce you to Benoit Jaru. all right? So let's give him a big round of applause. It's a pleasure for me to, to be here with you and uh, I hope you have uh, fun. It's important to have fun with, uh, with friends and uh, on the pitch with the ball. Where, where did you come from? from what time? I come from France and I used to play in Marseille in France. What made you become a soccer player? Wow, it's a tough question. A little bit of uh, talent, a lot of work and a lo uh, little bit of luck. Ça va les mecs, ça se passe bien I have to introduce my uh, nephew, Livio. Say hello. Tu dis bonjour. And my son, Gabriel, who are uh, both uh, seven. And they do the summer camp and they have fun. You have fun vous êtes, Ça vous plaît yeah. <laughs> est -ce, Comment est-ce que moi je parle anglais Bien ou pas Oui. Ah, thank you, guys. <laughs> You want on the, on the jersey? Yes? The right foot? It's better if it's uh, the left foot. <laughs> You're welcome. We are professional now, but before we were uh, on the pitch uh, with them, with uh, our friends, and I think it's the most uh, important thing for, for kids to, to play soccer, to have fun, to be with friends, and uh, nothing, uh, nothing more. I had to dress it up and bring him in the Adidas bag. They're like, oh my God, he brought gifts for us. I say, yeah, I got gifts, they're books. You guys doing some reading? We're doing some reading. Nice. Oh, you guys got all the books. Nice. You like the books? The reason why I built this whole program was to share my passion of reading with you guys, because it's something that I do um, to, keep, to keep my mind sharp when I'm not 
when I'm not playing, when I'm not practicing. We've been working with the inner city schools. We wanted to show them that reading can be fun and engage them in different ways than they're being engaged in school and maybe that helps coming from a professional soccer player. So tell me about every day. Did anybody read every day? You loved it. All right, tell me what you loved about it. We're just sharing the message that we've been sharing all along is that reading can be fun outside of school and that they should take their future into their own hands. It's strange how reading can help you in ways that you wouldn't think of. My wife's pregnant. We're going to have a little baby girl. It's our first child and that's uh, it's, <laughs> it's hard to put into words the feeling, you know? Uh, you feel a little bit of pressure, but you feel excited and scared all at the same time. You probably all have goals and, and dreams and things that you want to accomplish in life, and I'm, I'm so happy. I want you guys to be dreamers because when I was your age, I was a dreamer too. The reason why I did this program is because it was important to me, you know? And I wanted to share, share myself with these kids and let them know that they can get to where they want to be. Did you hear that? What? Their 30 minute period wasn't wasted because they got yeah. to do reading. Because of you. Wow, it makes me feel like I actually accomplished something. Yeah. Toronto FC goes into Seattle missing a number of regulars. Six starters missing, three key substitutes. Seba's not going to be there, Josie's not going to be there. Time for a lot of other players to get a chance to step up in one of the hardest places to play in MLS. Set for kickoff at CenturyLink Field. Toronto FC come here after back-to-back -back home wins. A trip to Seattle always tricky in the best of circumstances, but Toronto FC under strength tonight, missing amongst others Sebastian Jovinko and Josie Altidore. Greg Vanny's job made even more difficult tonight by the late absence of Justin Morrow, who was actually in Seattle yesterday but left early this morning to head back home as his wife is about to give birth to their first child. Luke Moore turning, but is dispossessed. And now this is Clint Dempsey. Oberfemi Martins ahead of Dempsey. Martins makes the run. Dempsey with a lovely through ball. Delightful from Seattle. And Oberfemi Martins applies the finish just five minutes in. The start that Toronto FC didn't want just happened. They're down a goal, under strength. And now they have to come out and try and play. Now Ashton Morgan, Morgan with the cross into the middle, and it's headed in, Toronto FC a level. Eric Zavaleta, the former Sounders player, returns to CenturyLink and scores the goal that ties the game. Given away though to Ozzy Alonso, forward towards Obafemi Martins here. Obafemi Martins up against Williams, played in towards Cliff Dempsey, saved by Kanopka. Dempsey will chase to the far side. Back in from Dempsey, Marshall's header once again, cannot come with the save. And now it's over Femi Martins, turning against Simonin on halfway. Zavaleta trying to get back, Martins through, cannot come with the save, but it's followed up by Dempsey, and the Sounders are back in front. Ted Uncle, the referee, checks the watch, blows the whistle. A brave effort from Toronto FC, but in the end, it's not enough. As Clint Dempsey scores the winning goal, 13 minutes from time, Dempsey's goal gives the Sounders all three points. Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Nice, nice to meet you. Give me the name test right there. Okay, we won't, we won't. This is pretty sweet. Can you hacky sack? Can All right, let's do it, guys. Are you ready? You want, you, start, you want to start us off? You need to throw it or kick it. Start with a kick. Yeah. yeah. Start, Angel. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Well, I think everybody is given an initial shot at having a normal life, and some people are stripped of that at a very early age, and they don't always know that they are owed that and they deserve that. Who's getting on whose shoulders? I can get it. Good thing we're already at a hospital. 
Doing things like this and showing our appreciation for them and how they continue to battle against all odds is something we like to do and reminds us of how lucky we are, obviously, and then it's just something we like to do as a team and anytime we get to come out here, it's great and we really savor and cherish every moment we have here. There's two teams in the Eastern Conference that I'd be nervous about. The New York Red Bulls and the New England Revolution. This game to me though, at home against a team directly in front of you, you need that home playoff game. It's massive, there's no other way of putting it. It's a statement game. Time is of the essence. Points are points are points. That, that's the way that I approach things, especially coming down to the final month, month and a half of the season. is what, what I call my son. So it, it kind of right away popped off the page when I saw the name of the organization. It's the smiles, it's the looks on their faces, it's the excitement in their eyes when, when you're able to spend a little bit of time with them. Oh, wow, Woo! Can you sign my hat? Today it makes me so happy to meet Michael Bradley. Can you sign my t-shirt? like it? No. It's fun today. <laughs> I really want to thank you, and uh, we hope we can do this again. And is there a three big cheers? Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. We're going to see if we can give you guys a really good game today. When we look up and we see you guys in the stands, it means a lot to us. For the second week in a row, Vanny will go with three at the back. Five changes for Toronto, mostly healthy players getting back into the lineup. There is not a hotter team in MLS right now than the New England Revolution. A proverbial six-pointer here this evening with New England leading Toronto FC by three in the Eastern Conference. for Toronto FC. New England have an unlikely lead. Now Jovinko uses his trickery to do the same. Here's Jovinko. Across to a wide open Delgado over his head. The win. Win across for Caldwell. What a well-constructed goal that was by the New England Revolution. Defensively. Uh, again, transition. If we have numbers around the ball, we want to be able to repress. We want to be able to get after and oppose it. I don't need to talk about what's at stake, right? This, what's at stake is three points at the end of the day, and we get closer to the groups in front of us, and we stay in touch with, with the groups of where we want to go. The only factor is whether or not Toronto can come back from this two-goal deficit. Otherwise, they'll find themselves six points behind the New England Revolution in the fight for one of the top four spots in the MLS Eastern Conference and a home date in the playoffs. Morrow does well to get it in there. Finley off the post and in! Robbie Finley cuts the lead to 2-1. To Robbie Finley again pops up inside the six-yard box and draws Toronto within one with lots of time left to play here. See inspired here. Superior possession, superior opportunities. Jones turns at the edge of the box, goes down. Bradley with it. Bradley in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, what a shot! And it's three to one. Not the kind of mistake you'd expect from Michael Bradley. 
New England with pouncing on their chances as they have beat Toronto FC at BMO Field. We missed a lot of chances that I would fancy us putting away on other days. We don't give away an own goal, and we don't give away at the ball at the top of the box, and we finish two other or one other of our 21 chances, and we're having a completely different discussion. We don't have a lot of time. I mean, that's for sure. The next games that we're looking at that are in front of us, we need to start accumulating some points. Each and every loss is, for sure, we're pissed, we're, we're frustrated, we get angry. It certainly wasn't the idea to, to lose three games in a row at that time of the season. It wasn't our, our, our best performance by, by any means, and we know that. You're upset against yourself, and I think the, the, the best thing to do is uh, look at uh, yourself in the mirror to be sure uh, you, you gave everything. What could I have done differently in preparation for the team? Were the tactics correct? How did we lose this particular game? What were the reasons? And how can we do better? The process is a long-term vision. It's not, not just a one-year vision. So you're trying to, to go and find pieces from a bunch of different places that you think are going to start to come together as your core group of players. We know who, what our group should look like. We know what our system should look like. Michael is the consummate, like, he wants this to be successful, right? He, he, he is as passionate about this project being successful as anyone. Oso's blossomed, I think, for us this year and matured. He's become a real factor on our team. Ben is, uh, he's just a very intelligent soccer player. His calm presence is important in our locker room and in our team. Josie, to me, is he has the biggest personality. He knows how to bring everybody into the equation, which is an important personality for our group. Sebo, he's an edge of your seat, game changer at any given moment on the field. He just has that uh, incredible ability to, to make things happen on the field. The teams that have been successful are the teams that have been consistent with their player personnel, consistent with the lineups that they're able to put on the field week in and week out. Uh, those are the teams that have gotten results. You can't get caught up in the emotions. We have the emotion, but as quickly as possible, separate from it, find the solutions, and continue the process of moving forward instead of getting caught in, in history and things that have gone on that we can't control anymore. Uh, it was Friday night before the game in Seattle, around 11 o'clock Pacific time, my wife calls me and I knew as soon as I saw her name come up on the caller ID that I was going to have to go home and I was going to have to miss the game. Um, I got a flight at 7 in the morning, left the hotel at 5 a.m. and it was a long flight home but I made it in time for the birth of my daughter. She's a beautiful baby girl. She was born at 8.58 p.m. and she weighed 7 pounds 12 ounces.